Hey, it's Clay. Welcome to another video. Today, we're going to do a deep dive into high gain guitar amplifier schematics. What are some of the basic building blocks that they use? How do they use those building blocks in a way that it makes it conducive for high gain? And what are some things you can learn if you're just curious about high gain amplifiers or into amp design or building your own amps? Hopefully this can be helpful. If you're curious about that, go ahead and stick around. Let's dive in. All right, to begin with, I want to take a look at kind of one of the forefathers of the high gain amplifier, and that has to be the Plexi. This is a 1987 Super Lead. Um, that's the 50 watt, and then the 1959 is the 100 watt. That doesn't refer to year that refers to like schematic number or model number, kind of like Fender does AB763 or something like that. But I think this is kind of the forefather of the high gain amplifier, and we got to start here. Now, I've also done a video on my channel where I go into deep dive on the Plexi and the JCM800 and the JTM45 and kind of the way those amps develop. So go ahead and take a look at that. That might be a really good starting point. Also, with this video, I'm not going to get into all of the minutia and the nuance of every individual specific component. Um, I'm going to kind of try to provide more of a bird's eye view of kind of basic and, and generalized concepts. And certainly there's a lot of the to these amplifiers that I still don't know know or understand in terms of the minutia. And the minutia is important. And so I don't want to I don't want to um, confuse you on that. But uh, this is just, you know, it, it'd be really hard to go into such a deep dive. And maybe I'll do that later in a follow up video. But today I wanted to focus more on kind of a 10,000 feet bird's eye view. So starting with the Plexi, follow the, the layout here in the right, in the red. And just so you're aware, uh, I need to give tons of credit to Rob Robinette. His website is absolutely fantastic. I please go and support him and check out his website. Basically everything that he does, just first of all, it's explained so well. And he is an excellent teacher. And he also provides really high quality images that are so much easier to view and digest than most of the other schematics that are out there probably made by engineers for, for amp techs. Um, so this stuff is a lot better. But basically this red uh, signal flow here is the bright channel. So we've got our input jack here into a 12AX7 gain stage, into a, a volume control, into a, this is, I'm going to call this a cathode follower. So first you have just a basic 12AX7 gain stage into a uh, DC coupled cathode follower. And this helps to propel the signal into a tone stack, which is basically loaded, located at the very tail end. So we've got treble, bass, middle, and then um, there actually is no master volume here into the phase inverter. And this is using a long tail pair phase inverter. This basic setup is kind of some of the core building blocks of a lot of high gain amplifiers. I would say there definitely are variations on the theme. Uh, but this really is the basic bedrock for where you go from here. And basically what you start doing to get high gain amps is you start adding gain stages in front. And so if we look here at the JCM 800, now this is Rob Robinette's adaptation of his JCM 800 6v6. But just looking at the preamp, we can see the same thing that I was just talking about. Um, we've got this right here would be our first gain stage. This right here would be our first gain stage. We've got our long tail pair phase inverter, our tone stack, and our, I'm sorry, our, this is our cathode follower, and long tail pair, pair phase inverters over here. So, I mean, this from, from this to this, this is basically a plexi. But the interesting wrinkle is we have this high gain jack right here. So the amp comes into this first gain stage, goes through coupling cap, and then comes into where the plexi would be. And then one interesting thing it does is it actually changes this resistor to be a 10K uh, cold clipper. That is a nice, interesting distinction. And basically what the cold clipper does is if this is the waveform, uh, when it comes into this tube, it gets amplified. So if it comes in and it's like this, it, when it comes out, it's going to be like this. So it's obviously getting amplified and the phase gets flipped. This is our zero line. Well, what the cold clipper does is it basically changes it so that the negative waveforms are clipped. So basically, if you imagine all of this, all of these peaks would actually get clipped. So the positive waveforms are being amplified pretty 
significantly, but the negative waveforms really have a very limited swing to swing negative, and so they get clipped very, very quickly. That is asymmetrical distortion, uh, generates a lot of harmonic content, and is definitely integral to the sound of the JCM-800 specifically in particular. So this is kind of one adaptation. And really, if you're trying to amplify the signal uh, in a traditional or hi-fi sense, where you're literally just taking the signal, making an exact replica of it that's just louder, this is not how you'd want to do it. But the when the goal is to create guitar distortion, this is an excellent way to do it. Uh, you are quickly uh, clipping the signal without really increasing the volume nearly as much as you could, but you're focusing instead on creating and generating distortion uh, with the use of this resistor. Okay, but again, um, a couple other thoughts. With Again, you've got this cathode follower here driving into this tone stack. And one interesting thing to note about that is the placement of the tone stack here is like right at the very end. Like you could really call this the preamp and then this is the phase inverter. Um, you know, the tone stack being so late in the circuit is really important for high gain amps because if you would place the tone stack earlier in the circuit, um, it's not really going to function as well to shape the actual EQ because you have you're going to have so many more gain stages after it, and it's going to instead maybe like shape the tonal character a little bit more. For example, depending on how much bass you have, that could determine whether it's kind of fuzzy and loose versus tight, and you know in the feel of the low end, um, or even you know with the mid range content and with the uh, highs that can really determine the feel of and how kind of um, piercing it can get so a, a lot of importance there but having the tone stack here at the end of the amplifier really does let these eq controls function as tone controls but then what they do instead is they use capacitors in some of these key locations to help shape the eq and so we'll kind of maybe dive into that a little bit that more in the upcoming. But the basic building blocks here of adding another gain stage in the front in series, starting to, to sh instead of focusing solely on amplification, focusing on generating distortion with this cathode follower, um, and also having tone stack at the end of the preamp with the use of a cathode follower. Some of those basic building blocks are here and you can really see how they are present and important in a lot of these amps. So now, this is another one of Rob's schematics. This is an awesome schematic actually for the Soldano SLO100, which is an awesome high gain amplifier. Um, now this amp is really cool because uh, it definitely, again, is more of a modern adaptation. And so um, we have a similar um, you know, if we actually kind of take it back to front, you can see we've got our long tail pair phase inverter here. We've got our tone stack here, just like we did with with our JCM and our, our Plexi. We've got a um, D cathode follower right here. Uh, all of this so far is is exactly what it was before. Now, we have a little bit of a distinction here that we've got a uh, buffer uh, for your um, effects loop. But then the rest of the preamp stuff is really occurring here. Okay, so let's take a look at that and see if we can't identify how Soldano takes the basic building blocks from the Plexi and the JCM and even takes it a step further. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to focus on this green. That's the OD signal path. There is a clean signal path. And basically what the clean does is it... Um, uses some pretty significant attenuators uh, to basically like turn the volume way down. Uh, and there's also a less of a gain stage, but there's just a lot of voltage dividers. For example, right here, there's a 2.2 meg and a 330K. Rob is estimating that is dumping 87% of the signal. That is a lot of signal bleeding to ground, um, basically rendering these gain stages null and void. But um, instead, let's take a look at the OD signal path. And just to count, we've got one, two, three, four gain stages, followed by, I'm going to call this one a fifth one, because we really do have gain here from this guy, uh, five. And then um, we've got 
the long tail fare phase inverter, which also adds gain. So it's almost like six gain stages. That is a lot of gain stages. Okay. So um, let's now kind of take a little bit more of a deep dive into these into these bad boys. Okay. So let's look at this first gain stage. Now this is going to be a little more specific to this Soldano, but I think some of the main themes we've been talking about so far will continue to show up. Okay. So uh, this is our first gain stage, 12x7. Interestingly, we have a 220K plate load resistor. I would say 100K is quote unquote standard or more normal, but 20, 222K is going to change the load line. It's going to change how the uh, this amplification stage lets that voltage swing, kind of similar to the cathode follower, but in a different way. Um, but just of note, you can play around a little bit with this plate load resistor and get a little bit of a different function. Now there's other plate load resistors. For example, this one's 100K. Uh, this one's also 100K. Um, 100K here. So a lot of different ways that you can do the plate load resistor. 100K is probably more common, but you can also do 220K. 1.8 cathode bi uh, biasing resistor is fairly moderate and normal. But then of interesting, first note, we've got a one microfarad bypass capacitor. If you were to look at like a Fender style amp, you're going to see 25 microfarads. The value of this cap will shave low end frequencies. So the lower the number gets, uh, the less bass you have. So 25 microfarads is going to, you know, imagine this is our EQ, right? And if this is like zero hertz and this is 20K. So the way it works is if you have like, uh, 25 microfarads, you're going to let basically all those frequencies come in. But, you know, like, let's say this is 100 hertz. That's kind of where the low end of the guitar really starts. If you get to about one microfarad, you're going to move this line like to right there. So frequencies under about maybe 80 or 70 are really going to be kind of shim shaved off. And you may not really notice it, but it's definitely going to help to keep the amp a little bit tighter um, and it's going to shave or trim some of those really low frequencies. And imagine, you know, we just said there are six gain stages. So everything that you let come through this first gain stage is going to get amplified and amplified and amplified through six more gain stages. So by trimming a little bit of bass frequencies, by using just a little bit of a tighter value cap there, that again is just going to help us keep this amp a little bit more um, uh, tame is maybe the word I'm going to use. We're going to tame the amp to prevent it from becoming such a wild beast. Um, that's unusable. Okay. Then we've got a 0.02 microfarad coupling cap. I'm going to say that's fairly normal, but you know, like a, a 5v3 would have a 0.1, which is going to add more bass. So this is a little bit of bass shaving going on here as well. So the use of these two capacitors are going to help trim a little bit of bass, keep it a little bit, um, under wraps. Okay, now we've got uh, another core function of high gain amps is that almost always, whenever you get after your coupling cap, you run into something like this. Now this is our gain pot, but um, you can see there's quite a lot of resistance going on. And basically you're using resistors either as grid stopping or as attenuators, as as a voltage dividers, as volume controls to dump some of that signal right here to ground. Okay. So, you know, with this 470K in, in combination with this 500K pot and another 470K grid stopper, all of these resistors are helping to, again, tame the amp. We don't want to get too much gain too fast. Otherwise, it's going to get wild and unruly. We need to step up the gain in a manageable way with uh, some attenuation. This is going to help control noise, control squealing, keep the amp a little bit under wraps. Some other thing I didn't mention before too is, this is a schematic, but like all of these wires, they're going to be running at this part of the amp are really critical. And a lot of times they're going to be using um, things like shielded cabling from the input jack to the component board. Or if it's on a component board, the layout of the PCB is really important. It needs to be tested. You know, the, the tracing of the wires through the PCB is really critical that you get it done right. And with some of these high gain amps, they have a tendency to be made with PCB and not necessarily made by hand. And frankly, I actually don't know 
what Soldano does. I, I haven't actually looked at any, you know, maybe he does use turrets, I don't know. But a lot of modern high gain amps do tend to favor PCB because you can be very consistent with your routing and your your signal keeping you know the that precious input signal away from anything else and preventing it from picking up noise you need to keep the signal quiet as possible and so again the resistors in this place this one and this one help to form a voltage divider to dump some of that signal to ground and this grid stopper that's a pretty high value grid stopper you know look we got 68k over here and 470 that's a lot more and so it, it really helps to tame the signal. So like I said, you're only bumping the gain up little bit by little bit. We also have a couple of capacitors. This 0.002 UF will help just increase a little bit of brightness at this stage to allow those super high frequencies to bypass this large resistor. And then we've also got another 0.001 bright cap bypassing the gain control. So Again, we've got a little bit of bass shaving going on with these caps, and then we got a little treble boosting going on with these caps, as well as these resistors that are overall just kind of taming the amp. So all of these controls are really critical to help get the voicing of the amp to be just right. Again, we're at what we're seeing here is a focus on trimming bass and boosting treble to keep it from getting, um, to keep it tight, to keep it from getting wooly or woofy on the low end. And we want it to be cutting in a little bit more aggressive on the high end. Okay, another 1.8K cathode by bias resistor and a 1UF bypass cap. Again, trimming a little bit of base. Same story here. So these first two gain stages have been basically identical, except for the plate load resistor, slightly different. Again, what do we see now? We see another attenuator, a 470K and a 1 meg. So this is not even on a gain control. This is hard fixed and is dumping quite a 32% of that signal is being dumped to ground. So again, to, to, keep, um, to keep things under wraps, to keep things uh, tamed from getting so woolly and woofy and out of control and feedbacky and, and harsh. Okay, now we come to gain stage number three. At this point, we're already like um, at JCM 800 level of gain stage. So, um, but then we see here, a 39K cathode follower. So similar to the JCM800, which was 10K, but taking it even a step further. So 39K means like, if this is your signal, it's like, if that's the zero line, like all the negatives are like only getting this far and all this is gonna get clipped off. Like the negative swing is gonna be clipped very immediately. There's gonna be little overall vol voltage gain and very, very significant amount of clipping coming from this cold clipper stage. Um, interesting, we got the plate load resistor, but then a 0.001 microfarad. Uh, this is a high cut filter. So basically what happens here is the signal that does get amplified here, some of these super high frequencies can go this way and they will look at this B plus uh, DC voltage source as ground. Uh, and so you're kind of using this to shave away a little bit of your high frequencies. So again, using some of these capacitors to, you've, we've trimmed bass earlier. Now we're, instead of boosting treble, we're actually trimming a little bit of treble. So we um, got a little bit of aggression early on, but we're still wanting to kind of keep it a little bit under wraps. Okay, then we go into a 0.02 coupling cap. We got a, a this resistor, I think, is for the switching. Um, so we'll disregard that. Again, a fairly large 220K grid stopping resistor. So again, a little more resistance here than you would maybe otherwise normally see. <clears throat> We've got a another gain stage here. Interesting. Another 220K plate load, 1.8K cathode, and a 1UF microfarad uh, bypass cap. Um, and that goes into our uh, cathode follower into the effects loop. Now, um, interestingly enough, we've got another uh, attenuator here, but I, I, I'm fairly confident that all this is dealing a little bit more with the effects loop. So I'm just gonna bypass that. And then uh, here at the end, you can see we've come out into another uh, cathode follower. Uh, in again, we've got this gain stage here, 
to provide a little bit more boost. And then this cathode follower is not going to add gain or voltage gain, but it's instead going to give it a stronger current flow, a higher current. So it's going to f not going to get gummed up in this, this weighty and lossy tone stack as much as it maybe otherwise would. Um, you know, the values here are maybe slightly different, but definitely a little bit more Marshall inspired. Um, you know, we've got the 250K treble pot, one meg bass pot, 25K mid pot, 0.02 and 0.02 on the mid and bass caps. Uh, the slope resistor, 47K, that's a little maybe different and unique to this. And then 47 picofarads on the treble cap. All these values really are quite important. And again, the location, we've been trimming treble and bass before, but this is really where we get that final EQ control and is really a really important part of the circuit. And then to the long tail pair phase inverter, um, and then one of the other characteristics about high gain amps is they have a tendency to be uh, a little bit higher wattage. So this is like a 50 watt amp, two 6L6s in fixed bias. You really kind of want the power amp to be high headroom, clean, and you want the distortion to come from the preamp. You, know, you typically don't run these power amps super hot into their own distortion or phase inverter distortion. You know, that's a little more what you would do like on a Plexi. But if you were to do that with this kind of amp, it would get really unruly because you already have so much distortion going on. One other thing of note is we can see we've got solid state rectification here coming off of the power transformer. Solid state rectification is going to give it a little bit more of a firm and immediate and, and responsive pick attack and feel. For, for again, with some of that, the, the, the you know, if you were to have a tube rectifier, it might just get a slightly more squishy, which doesn't always uh, jive with what you want in a high gain amp. And then to coincide along with that, you also are seeing pretty stout filtering. You can see we've got two 200, um, actually it looks like there's four 200 microfarad capa capacitors here. So this is um, the equivalent of 200 microfarads you know, again, having two in parallel and then two in series it cuts it in half and then doubles it again. So it's really 200, uh, which is a lot of, of filtering here at this first stage. Again, with that same theme of firm, stiff, responsive. Uh, and then we got a real beefy 200 milliamp choke. That's a lot of choke. 10 of Henry's, that's a lot of filtering going on there. And then another um, a 100 microfarads equivalent with two 200 caps. Again, very stiff. Um, very you know robust filtering going on here we got a 10k dropping resistor which is not a lot of dropping um and we got our bias supply and ultimately i think the power supply here just the general theme of this is being uh solid state rectifying um not a lot of voltage drop high voltage preamp we got 350 volts here even on the b plus four uh, 390, 59 here on B plus five, a lot high, high voltage, definitely for sure to get, um, yeah, as much voltage swing, even with these cathode, like the 39 K on the, on the cold clipper. But, um, all of this really is going together to make this a monster of an amp. And so, um, a lot of interesting things to look at here. I, I really think the general themes are stacking gain stages in series, but then also a lot of attenuation and a use of uh, smart use of capacitors to boost and cut frequencies and basically kind of trim the low end and the high end. You know, we're seeing, we're seeing bass trimming going on uh, here, here, um, treble boosting here, you know, just subtle tone shaping. And these attenuators are also really critical. All, all of these, these interstage activity is really important. You know, it's not like a plexi where you just kind of run one or the other at full blast and let it rock. You know, you, if, if you were to do that, the amp would really kind of get away from you. So you want to step up the gain, but in a way that's controlled without letting it get too wild. Uh, so I think that's gone on enough. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts down below. If there's any other specific circuits you'd like me to take a look at, I'd be happy to do so. Again, the focus here was to give you some bird's eye view on high gain amps. Let me know your thoughts down below, and I'll see you again soon. Thanks. Bye.